I'm gonna run you through my personal daily driver. Like I said, 1,084 newton meters of torque. And this is what makes a Super Tourer a Super Tourer. And I can promise you, you'll probably be the envy of everyone on your block because let's be honest, who doesn't love a Ram? What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Patriot Garage. And today, I'm gonna to run you through my personal daily driver. <laughs> Now this has got to be, hands down, the best four wheel drive that I've ever owned and that is a massive, massive statement and I'll tell you why. It does everything that I want a car to do. From touring to deep mud holes, towing, daily driver, comfortable, out of the box. You're going to be really surprised with the limited amount of modifications that I've made to the Ram 2500 that you see uh, behind me. And again, there's a really, really good reason for it. Out of the box, it has everything that you want out of a four-wheel drive. Everything, absolutely everything. It's got a 6.7 Cummins in it, makes over a thousand Newton meters of torque. And as I run you through these things, think about if you were going to build a four-wheel drive and you had to get it to this stage, what that would cost you. Do the little, do the sums in your head as I go through it. 1,084 Newton meters of torque out of the box. Live axle. Coil rear end, five seater, it's already a ute, yeah? Comes with a three year warranty and is now represented by Ram Trucks Australia in every capital city and then some across Australia. There's really not a lot that you have to do to do these things capable. And if you're sitting there thinking, well, you know what? It's not really a capable four wheel drive. Let's take a little trip back to Moab in the United States probably the most hardcore rock crawling four wheel driving that I've ever done and what we put a 2500 Ram through. Mistakes will definitely not end up well here. Not so bad when it's steep like this. Yeah, when it's steep down. like this, it changes things. Two of the most recognized 79 Land Cruisers in the world and here we are in a Jeep and a Ranger. Oh, that's pretty weird. I wonder if they've ever had a Ranger do the hot tub here in Moab. I would say that's definitely no. You think a Ram's ever done? No. Two first. So if you're sitting on the couch right now and you're saying to yourself, well, look, it's not really a touring vehicle. You know, they're a big American tow pig which is kind of a stigma that the Ram had, used to have. Um, you couldn't be further from the truth and I'm gonna run you through the reasons why. And we're gonna start with the drivetrain on this one because the drivetrain on, on the, the 2500 is really the number one thing that you buy a 2500 for. Okay, three, two, one, roll, go, 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 go. You got smoked. Like I said, 1,084 Newton meters of torque. Put that into perspective. The modifications that you need to make to any other diesel four wheel drive that I know that's currently on the market, nothing even comes close. So with that, you get up to 6.9 tonnes of towing out of the box. So there's a lot of regulations based around that. You've got to have a pintle hitch. You've got to have specific brakes on your trailer if you want to go over that three and a half or four and a half tonnes. Most people will run with the four and a half ton towing capacity um, on these things. So if you've got an overweight boat, say for example, and look, let's face it, I'm in the game, I'm in the industry, the caravans I see that are going around Australia that are just so overloaded, um, that shouldn't be coupled up to some of the cars that they're coupled up to, take that into consideration. You've got a live axle front in it, um, it, when you get underneath the ram and you look at the chassis rails and you look at the actual housings of the diff centers uh, in these things in the axle tubes, um, they're just, they're so over-engineered for what they're rated for here in Australia because of the Australian licensing rules. 
So we have to stick within a, a particular GVM, and, and I'm not going to get into the politics of it, but you've got to stick in Australia here to a certain GVM to be able to drive a truck like this on a car licence. But let's put this into perspective, where my love of this thing started. When we entered the United States about four years ago now, I bought a Ram 3500 Julie. Fundamentally, it's exactly the same platform as what you see here. It's got a longer bed, a dual R rear wheel, diff gearing's different and those sorts of things. Actually, I think the transmission was different in that one as well, but the power plant's exactly the same. We were rolling down the highway with the Patriot Goosenecks at 22 tonnes on a car licence in the United States. You simply just can't do that here in Australia. So they've got to keep the GVMs down uh, to make sure that everybody here in Australia can drive them on a car licence. You've got a six-speed automatic transmission uh, coupled up in there as well. You can put 35-inch tyres on these things legally out of the box with no modification plate. So you can go your two inches over. Then when you go and go your two inches uh, wheel track increase, um, which we'll get to a little bit later on, they're just the ultimate platform. They're the ultimate platform to start with and they do absolutely everything well. I'm not saying they do everything the best, but as an all-rounder, I'm telling you now, you can't beat it. Consider a Ram 2500 and that is why I have one in the Patriot Garage and this is my weapon of choice for everything. The 6x6 has a job. The black truck has a job. Any of the other vehicles that we have, they have a particular job they were built for a purpose. This thing here is built to do everything I need it to do. Let's get into it. Let's have a walk around Patriot Garage here on the set where we film loading up all the creations, all the big builds happen here. I'm going to run you through. 2500 RAM. All new episodes of Patriot Games are streaming now on YouTube. To celebrate, we're giving our subscribers the chance to win this Get Lost package worth over $170,000, which will transform your new daily driver into a fully kitted out campsite on demand. We've taken an all new Isuzu D-Max with a three litre turbo diesel engine and 3.5 ton towing and given it the Patriot Games treatment, equipping it with more power for off the grid adventures. More vision with a suite of LED lighting. More connection with an impressive radio platform. More carrying capacity with a peak or tray. Pair that with the Patriot Campus X1N. Your complete base camp station with the best off-road towing technology. Plenty of storage, a fully equipped camping kitchen and more. Plus, receive a brand new Polaris Ranger 150 and loads of camping gear and accessories so you can get lost in style. Entries close June 30, 2021. Enter online now at patriotgames.tv. Under the hood, there's not a lot to look at because we haven't modified anything. This is as it comes out of the box. Uh, the 6.7 litre Cummins turbo, turbo diesel. 270 odd kilowatts. Uh, the power is not really relevant uh, to the torque um, in this engine. Again, I think I've said it four or five times now, 1,084 newton meters. And until you drive one, um, that torque underneath your right foot. Fuel consumption is a big thing, right? So fuel consumption with the 2500, big truck, big torque, a lot of mass, you're moving a lot of weight. I sort of see with mine, in the current configuration, driving around town, I'll do about 16 litres per 100. Um, if I have a, you know, a week where I feel a little bit heavier on the foot, and might jump up a little bit. When I'm towing the race car, so the biggest thing for this one, the number one job that this one has is towing the new, uh, the new Patriot Trophy truck. We see somewhere around 22 litres per 100, and that's fully loaded up, uh, three and a half tonnes, all the gear, you know, everybody on board. So fuel consumption in this thing really gets up there. But if I compare that, uh, to say my 6x6, the 6x6 does about sort of 26 to 28 litres per 100. Uh, we were seeing around town and when we were up in Arnhem Land, we were doing over 30 litres per 100, but that's a very, very heavy modified truck. Probably not a fair comparison, but it gives you some sort of indication. In America, you can buy this model uh, with a Hemi, couple of different uh, forms. So I think, they, I think they do the 5.7 and they do the 6.2 over there um, in the United States. 
I wouldn't like to see a petrol motor in the 2500. I think it really needs that torque for the 2500 to be what it is, you know, and what it's built for. I think if you're going to go for a petrol, uh, you'd go for a 1500 like you would have seen in one of the other Patriot garages with uh, Sarah's car. You're going to get uh, better fuel consumption out of it. If the size doesn't really bother you, and to be honest with you, it doesn't bother me. Yes, they do take a little bit of getting used to. They're a big truck. But again, if I compare that back to where it all kind of started for me, which was a Trop 200 series with a 650 mil extension, you put one of them side by side with this, and again, dimensionally, it's really, really close. They're very similar. There's not a lot in it. I think this might be just a touch longer, um, but your width um, is pretty much exactly the same. I still take this pretty much everywhere I can go. This is uh, a little bit taller, so some car parks it won't uh, fit under. I'd done a trip up to Brisbane City, idiot, a couple of weeks ago. I went up there right into the city, had to go to one of the high rises, got it jammed up underneath the car park. So keep an eye out for that. But it's a little bit deceiving. They've got a massive bonnet on them. You can see here beside me, they appear to be a bigger truck than they are because the hood is so high. On the 1500, the hood's kind of down here and the front end's a little bit different. Cab size, as I've said in another video, the cab size is exactly the same. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a background on the, the the 2500, and I suppose what you would consider when it comes to this power plant, uh, what you're doing if you're towing and predominantly towing as a dual purpose car, daily driver, and a touring truck. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only out of the box thing on the market. That's what you need. That's what you want. We'll talk about some modifications. Before I do that, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit to the first 2500 Ram that we built. When we done our trip up to Arnhem Land in season two of Patriot Games, I built my first Ram 2500. And like I said uh, before, the love really came from the 3500 that I owned in the United States. And my good mate over there, uh, Matt from Ex Exploration Outfitters, he had a really well kitted out uh, Ram 2500 Laramie, same spec as this one here, and some of the things I saw him doing, it, it just changed my whole mind, like, this is actually a proper four-wheel drive. So we built the first Super Ram, which you can see here, I've still got the number plates off that car, that car's long gone now, uh, we sold it uh, to a local here on the Gold Coast. Um, that one there had a four-inch BDS lift, and if I've got to be perfectly honest with you, it was quite fatiguing to drive that car on long trips. You were because it was so high and there was so much change in geometry um, that you were really kind of fighting that thing on the highway. And at the end of a big day in the saddle, uh, you felt it. You knew that you were driving it. Hence the reason the second one that I've built, I've gone a lot more sedate. And this is one of the most comfortable uh, long touring vehicles that I've ever driven because we've returned it back to factory kind of geometry. It doesn't track and fight and all the rest of it. But the first, the black Super Ram, was one of the most badass looking cars that I think we've built, or that would probably ever build. And, and we were the first ones here in Australia to really take that Ram to that level. A couple of things that we kind of learned from that, I've uh, adjusted for the second build, knowing that this was gonna be my, my daily driver. Getting back to it, this one here started life as a sports pack. So with the sports pack here in Australia, from Ram Trucks Australia, you get a color coded uh, grill and you get black headlights. We fitted a, a pretty unique front bar onto this. My last trip over to the United States, actually before I even built the, the black Super Ram, I bought this bar. This was a, a Rhino bar uh, that I saw over in the United States. Pretty unique looking bar. I'll be honest with you, I get a lot of mixed opinion on it. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it. For me, I wanted to keep this one here kind of under the radar. So you'll see and that might sound a bit stupid just because, because of what it is. You cannot take this thing anywhere without somebody saying something. And with the Super Ram number plates, I don't think it really falls under the radar. But we haven't gone with the black bonnet, the black decals, or the standard kind of Super Tura uh, bar on this one because I wanted to trial something different. Would I buy that bar again? Uh, probably not, yeah? And not out of, out of functionality, it's more out of aesthetics. I think there's nicer looking bars that are available on the Australian market now. Got a 900 mil uh, X-ray light bar on the front, very standard for us. Um, X-ray is what we do. Um, and we've got X-ray uh, LED spotlights here as well. I probably will add a little bit more light to this one, to be honest. Uh, the factory headlights are not, not the best uh, in the Ram. And look, in most factory sort of cars, they don't really suit touring. The projection I get out of that 
has been awesome, been amazing. Uh, but next time we head out on a really long touring trip, I think I'll add a little bit more light to it. We've got the 1200 mil uh, GME whip because the base of the whip on this one is, is mounted a lot lower. It still uh, sits under the head height of the cab. Um, and that's something that we do um, kind of without thinking now. We'll, we'll match the whip to ensure that it doesn't hit on anything so you can get maximum kind of clearance. This one here is running the worn 16,000 uh, pound winch. Um, and the worn 16,000, if you would have, uh, you, you look back to the Simpson Desert crossing, you know. I feel like I'm sinking this side. You're about halfway there, mate. Halfway, you reckon? Yeah, about half. I think you're looking good. Uh, what I want to do, though, when we get you up on the hard stuff, I want to spin you around and have you pointing at Sarah's car because I want to use this winch on Sarah's car. That worn winch, we put that thing through hell. That's probably the, the, the most I've ever put a winch through in my life. And um, it's still going. It's still going today with no issues. So that's about a bit of the modifications on the front. Uh, let's take a walk down the side and I'll run you through some of the subtle mods that we've done down the side and then we'll look at the P cord. This one here features a three quarter canopy so we might spend a little bit of time there. Coming down the side of the truck, uh, also with the sports pack, you get uh, black decals. Um, they just fit in a little bit more with our theme. You know, the black and the colour is what we do with uh, Patriot Campers. While we're here, I'll touch on wheels and tyres. So on this one, uh, these trucks here, we're running a method wheel. So the method wheels, we've been running them for a really uh, long period of time. Um, they've got the specific bolt pattern and offset uh, to suit the ram. 305, 70, 18 tyre, which is just shy of a 35 inch tyre. These things come out of the factory standard with 33, so a 35 is perfectly legal um, with no modification plates. We're also, we're running this one, we're actually trialling on this one, Bilstein suspension, believe it or not. So we've got a two inch lift in there, uh, King Springs Bilstein shocks, um, and in the back, I'll run you through that a little bit later on, but we've got an air replacement in the back from Airbag Man, um, which we're doing a lot of work with those guys as well. And that's um, the whole package just rides awesome. It feels very, very similar to the factory Ram, to be honest with you. Maybe a little bit softer, but we've got that adjustability um, in the back. I haven't done any uh, hardcore kind of off-road stuff with this truck as yet. It's only, I don't think it's even done 10,000 Ks and it's mainly been towing the race car, like I said before. So we'll report back on, on how we kind of go with, uh, with that as well. Amp Research side steps on this um, truck here, definitely need them. They do have high sills and even uh, factory, they've got high sills. The factory uh, side steps that come on the ram, I've, I've smashed a couple of sets of those. They are quite low, uh, so that's something to look out for. And same with the factory front bars. So if you're going to be using it off-road or touring, we've been using uh, Amp Research side steps for a long time now, uh, and they're, they're just a really good bit of gear because they fold out of the way. They keep that ground clearance and just make the truck look a little bit cleaner. On top, we're playing around with a prototype here of a new Pico roof rack. So. If you're a Patriot Campers fan and you see the XO bar system um, that we've developed for the X1N, um, which is a, a variable bar uh, platform to hold different accessories and to suit a specific customer's needs, uh, we're playing around with that on the Ram 2500 and some other vehicles at the moment. Watch this space. That might be a product that might be released uh, pretty soon. So I don't think we'll go into detail with that right now for IP reasons, but you can see kind of where we're heading with it. It's a pretty cool bit of gear and something very, very unique that's come out of the engineering department uh, at Patriot Campers. And this is what makes a Super Tourer a Super Tourer. And these products are now available right across Australia and in the United States. Uh, PCOR Systems has launched as an independent brand now. The first thing when it comes to PCOR is styling. Look, you're going to invest $100,000, $50,000, $150,000 uh, into 
buying a vehicle and then invest whatever you're going to invest in top uh, onto that, you want to make sure two things. Styling, that it suits the styling of the truck that you're putting it onto, but functionality is more important than that. And all of our products, all the PCOR products, are based around touring, you know, touring, overlanding, off-roading, whatever you want to call it. And that's what we, we try and strive for, to make the best touring products in Australia in the market sectors that we're in. So let's touch on the tray first. You would have seen on another Patriot Garage, specifically Sarah's and, and every other's, uh, other one that's coming and you'll see the kind of evolution of PCOR and where it's got to. This is our standard six foot four PCOR tray uh, for the Ram 2500. The biggest advantage that you'll see over the 2500 tray uh, versus the 1500 tray, because of the axle position, it's a lot further back, is you get this massive big storage box in the front. Now customers will set this up for really however they like. Uh, we've got some shelves in there. For me personally, it really depends on the trip that I'm going on. Generally speaking, I'll load that one there full of recovery gear. I know close to the driver's uh, seat, if I get into the situation and need a recovery, I know where all of my gear is. You've got another massive uh, toolbox at the back. Um, again, when it comes to the axle position, on the Ram 2500, you actually get quite a short rear toolbox in the scheme or the world of PCOR. Most PCOR rear toolboxes are quite long, but the Ram 2500, the way that they balance the car and put that axle further towards the back of the car gives an awesome departure ang uh, angle on the back of the 2500. Again, we saw that firsthand in Moab. Um, but it gives you a smaller toolbox at the back. The one at the front more than compensates for it every single peak or tray is developed vehicle specific. So we utilize every square millimeter that we can of your, of your design uh, to ensure that you can load as much gear into it as you like. All of them are all aluminium. Uh, you've got structural uh, steel stringers that are carrying the capacity and then you've got an extruded aluminium deck as well. Powder coated finish, only available in black and powder coated headboard. Sitting on top of this one, the difference between this one and my wife's car is being the race support truck, uh, we need to carry a lot of gear in this. So we carry a lot of tools, we need power on board, we need power for the camera crew, that's specifically, or generally those guys are rolling with me. Uh, and the guy that's got the camera on the shoulder right now chews more power than probably anybody in the team, the whole camera crew, and we need to ensure that these guys have got the setup to keep it going. And that's where we developed this system that you see right here. Um, we've worked with Red Arc from day one. You know, Red Arc are their family to us and they have been from day one. The first product that I ever built surrounding off-road, uh, Red, Arc, Red Arc were there, they were involved. They had the perfect solution uh, to what I wanted before I had a relationship with them. It's gear that I love, trust, Australian manufactured more than anything, bringing technology to the entire globe and dominating the touring market. And it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about, you know, the success of the Australian companies and where we are now on the globe when it comes to touring. The rest of the world looks at, at us, looks at, and I don't mean us as in Patriot, I, look, I mean us as Australia, as Australian manufacturers, and, <clears throat> and the credibility of what Australia produces uh, to suit this market. Getting back to it, um, all of the Red Arc gear that you've seen here, I've got a 1500 watt inverter um, fitted in this one. We have a couple of different options there. A Manager 30, I've got two Revolution lithium batteries on board, so I've got 200 amp hours of power there. Uh, solar panels are going on top. We haven't fitted them yet, but that's something that the team are trying to get to. I find now it's harder for me to get stuff done for myself. The priority is always the customer. So now when I bring my trucks in, I'm like, boys, we need to fit this. Doesn't really happen as quick as I wanted it uh, to anymore. But you can see with the PCOR kind of styling, everything is really heavily engineered. We integrate all of these products. We put a lot of work into what works with what and the ergonomics of utilizing all of these products. You can see here, interior light switch is simple as that, but then you've got door plungers as well. So when you open the door, the lights are on, close the door, the lights are off. Very OE uh, kind of specific. All of the electrical systems are Australian certified or United States certified should you buy a peak or canopy in the United States. You know you're buying a product that has been engineered, it is compliant in your country and nobody's going to get electrocuted. Something to look out for when you're doing a uh, backyard, I shouldn't say backyard, but when you're doing your own installs on two 40 volt systems, guys, 
they got to be compliant. It's a federal standard. Ensure the safety of everybody that's using uh, your power systems. You can see with the RCD here, uh, the circuit breaker, that the whole circuit is protected. Big pull-out drawer, massive pull-out drawer in here. Again, everybody will use that for, you know, whatever they like. Generally speaking, that's where all the snacks go. All the junk food goes in there for those long trips. You can see on this side here, we've got pass-through storage. Um, the the Pcor 3 quarter canopy comes as a, as a complete package. So what I'm showing you here today, that's how it comes out of the box. Uh, there are no options as far as removing anything. So the walls, the fridge, when we get to it on the other side, they are all structural parts of the canopy and the whole system uh, works in its entirety. So we don't remove any of the product out of it. That's what it is. The back of the canopy is a complete pass through though. So if you want to carry long lengths of gear, you can, but also if you want to segregate uh, this in any sort of fashion, you want to add in drop down slides, you want to add in a peak or kitchen, drop down kitchen or any of those sorts of things, it's kind of modular in the back here for the customer to do whatever they like. That's about the back of the three quarter canopy. Um, so let's move around to the rear. The reason that we stop our canopies kind of this 300, 350 millimeters short of the rear of the deck is to keep all accessories on the tray within the proximity of the tray. You know, a wheel and tire, depending on the size that you get or the wheel that you get, you know, they can weigh up to 50, 60 kilos each. Fundamentally, you could have 120 kilos hanging off the back of your car and it's noticeable. You will feel the unbalance. I used to operate like that. I used to have vehicles that would have the wheels hanging out of the back. When we started Patriot Campers and we realized everywhere we, we went, we were towing, uh, draw bar lengths, you'll find when you're trying to swing a caravan or something around the back, and it could be as simple as backing it 90 degrees into a caravan park and you hit your tires, that's gonna upset you pretty much every time. So you have the opportunity here to put two spares on the back. Uh, two 35 inch spares will fit on the two meter wide canopy. This is a brand new product um, that's just been developed. This is the first one in existence right now. Um, this is roof access, so a ladder you can see here. Again, typically speaking, I'll have a trailer on the back. I'll step up onto the drawbar and climb up the ladder. If not, obviously, it works in a typical ladder sort of fashion. Or I can get right up onto the top of the, um, the canopy and access anything that I might have tied down on there. So that's a really cool bit of gear and you can fit both your 35s in the side. There's opportunity on the back of the Pcor canopy. We have multiple adjustable fixing points on the back and you can see this whole line of holes here. If you want something custom manufactured um, and not by us, we, we produce the gear that we produce, but for people that want to custom manufacture something, we give them the ability to put any mount that they like. Whether you want to carry gas bottles, an outboard motor, anything that you want to put on the back here, you've still got that room to do it here. Uh, in the back, massive rear pull-out drawer. Uh, the drawer is actually dimensionally the same size drawer as the 1500 RAM. Uh, we've got the same width in here. Central locking all the way through. And you can see the quality of everything that we put in the central locking system, the way the wiring harnesses are developed. Um, everything is fully engineered. Moving down to the back here, we got a 12,000 pound uh, winch at the back. The reason that we have a smaller winch on the back that we do at the front, obviously if you have to winch from the rear, you're gonna have to disconnect whatever you've got on the back. More importantly for this particular vehicle, being uh, the tow pick, I suppose, for the race car, when the race car breaks down, this is our recovery winch to get it onto the trailer. So we'll pull this winch out all the way past the end of the trailer, hook it up to the trophy truck or the razor in the event of uh, a breakdown, and winch it up onto the trailer, which means we don't have to have a winch on the trailer, obviously. Uh, tow bar at the back, you've got your standard uh, tow bar uh, receivers in there, three and a half ton, four and a half ton, pintle hitch, 6.9 ton, or just under seven ton that you can tow on that pintle hitch like I was talking about before. Anderson plug is pretty important when you're towing as well, so that'll uh, deliver the power um, to whatever you're towing behind. Moving underneath, um, the rear axle and these things, but we've done a full uh, rear airbag uh, replacement, replacing the coils, tune piston airbags, exactly the same products that we fit on all of our camper trailers uh, by Airbag Man here in Australia, now available in the United States as well. Uh, amazing product. 
Your water filler is at the back here. So you have an electric water pump mounted in this box here. Uh, and your onboard water in the poly tank uh, runs out of the back there. You can wire in other connections if you want, but I find this one here works really well. You hit the button here and uh, you can run it to a tap, but mainly for washing hands and those types of things I use it for. And on this side here, I've got a uh, recovery kit. This is left over from the last, actually the last um, event that we went to. This is the new Max Trax um, all soft rope recovery kit, soft shackles. I've just started using them. My world has changed, you know? Big recovery straps, uh, D shackles are completely a thing of the past. And the quality of the Max Trax gear, it's the same as their boards. You can't beat it. You would have seen the boards mounted up on the top. Um, you just can't beat the Max Trax gear. Dometic 85 litre stand up fridge. Oh, it's clean, good. Uh, <laughs> I remember when we uh, put the first stand up fridge into, um, I think it was the first canopy we ever built back in 14 or 15, and it was just, it just changed the game. You know, having a stand up fridge compared to a drop down slide portable fridge, you don't have items stacked on top of items. Now there's obviously situations where you have to use a conventional uh, portable fridge like we do in our camper trailers and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I definitely do prefer a stand up fridge. Uh, you've got a water level indicator here as well um, that's linked up obviously to the water tank and a couple of uh, 12 volt outlets on this side and that is all standard product um, when it comes to the peak or three quarter canopy. So definitely uh, check those products out. Available now in every capital city right across Australia. Check the PCOR website and obviously available now in the United States. Uh, check the PCOR uh, website for those details. Headboard lights, I didn't touch on those. Uh, so you've got headboard lights on either side, handy for every kind of style of thing. There's also one in the center which is taken up by the canopy. You can get roof rack mounts. Um, for this one here, I think what I'm gonna do I think I'm going to put a hard shell rooftop tent on the top of this uh, and probably more for Christian National just to eliminate the need to take another couple of swags. Um, the reason I haven't yet, again, it's a daily driver. I wanted to keep the height of this thing as low as possible so I can get it into most places that I go. Uh, there, are, there still are some limitations. Got a couple of solar panels that I do want to add on there, which will add about kind of 30 mil of height, so that's negligible. This truck is about finished for me. Uh, I don't think this one's going to be a big work in progress like some of my other projects. Again, getting back to the whole keep it simple, stupid type theory. The less modifications that you can make on a touring vehicle, it's really quite simple. The less problems you're going to have with it. And being my daily driver, the reliability that I need out of this vehicle as a recovery vehicle for the trophy truck is far more important uh, to me than having all the gadgets. But I think it gets back to what I said to you at the start. The 2500 Ram out of the box has everything that you would want, everything out of a touring car. There's nothing that it's missing. So there's not a lot to do. I think the P-Core system at the back of it, um, it obviously suits what we're doing with it. And that's what makes it a touring vehicle. But then your standard modifications, and I mean the top five stuff that you have to do. You have to fit a good set of tires. You have to fit a good set of suspension. You definitely need a bull bar for safety. You need a good set of lights and you need communications. You need an XRS when I say communications. That's the only radio on the market that I think is sufficient right now. So outside of those five things, there's nothing else that you need, in my opinion. The rest is will improve on what you're doing. But with those five things, let's go through them again. Tires, suspension, bull bar, lights, communications. You do those five things to your truck, you can go anywhere. You really can go absolutely anywhere. I'm not saying that you're not going to get bogged, but you can take a, a touring vehicle on any kind of expedition, um, starting with those five things. So the thought process that you need to buy a truck and then go and dump, you know, all of this money on it and turn it into, you know, an absolute weapon, don't need to do that. You progress. I've started with what I know will work and what I specifically want for the jobs I want to do with this one. And I pretty much nailed it. There's nothing else that I need to do. Let's jump into the interior and uh, we'll finish up in there.
Feels like home. Well, I suppose this is home. One of the things I haven't touched on uh, in this video is there there are low volume importers being, bringing Ram 2500s into Australia now. Now, Ram Trucks Australia, ASV, and I've said it in past videos before, guys, please consider what you're buying and how they do it. So these are a federally complied car. They come with a three year, 100,000 kilometer warranty. You've got a dealership in every capital city and then some around Australia. So if you're touring around, you get into trouble, service or warranty, and let's face it, every single car breaks down. If they didn't, companies wouldn't have service or warranty departments. Um, but the quality of the conversion, when you're looking for an imported vehicle that's been converted here in Australia, take note of things like dash themes, right? Stitching, all of the, th the things that you can see on the surface. When you can see on the surface that something ain't right, I can promise you from experience, from what you can't see, a lot of things are gonna be wrong. When they bring these trucks into Australia, they have a full production facility here in Australia where they remanufacture the cars. And when I say remanufacture, they strip these things down to the frame. They take the cab off, they take the engines out. The conversion is done as it would be done in the Ram factory in the United States. That's the kind of level that they go to. So like everything, you get what you pay for. Um, I would not consider buying a low volume import Ram specifically because you have the opportunity to buy it from a factory backed Ram company here, right here in Australia. So let's get into a couple of things. Very, very similar in the interior of the 2500 Laramie and the 1500 Laramie, they're pretty much identical. They have exactly the same cab. In the 2500 Ram, um, you get six seats. Move my keys out the way. This is how they come in Australia. In the United States, you have options for center consoles and some other bits and pieces. But in Australia, this is what you get. I use this really regularly. Kids are coming to that age now. They're at parties on the weekends. They've always got friends over. Very often on the weekends, I will have five kids in here. I'll show you how good this thing is. I'm telling you now, this is oh, going to yeah. be the next big thing in Australian touring. Oh, you've got coins in there already, sweet. Are you really not impressed, though? 240 in the dash. <laughs> you, you are impressed, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, you are impressed. I can, I can tell. From, from the guy who likes patrols, how could you not like this? <laughs> like, are you joking? So, uh, How's this three up in the front? Uh, typically speaking, Mia will sit there right beside me and she'll have one of her friends and then the boys in the back or however we roll. When that centre seat is folded down, you wouldn't know that there's a seat there. It's really comfortable, big armrest. The driving position in this thing is awesome. Compared to the 1500 with that big bonnet out there, it will take you a little bit of time to get your uh, to get your distance when it comes to parking this thing uh, with the front end. Again, I, I park this everywhere. I take it to gym in the mornings. I go to the shopping centres. I pick the kids up from school, and it you just got to be a little bit more cautious about it. And that's how it is with a big truck. Um, you've got pretty much everything in here uh, that you would want. I can't think of anything else you'd need. Heated seats, heated steering wheel. Alpine stereo, the stereo system in these things pump. We've got subwoofers underneath the back seat, which is all factory stuff. Um, if you're into your music, into your beats, that's important. That's really important to me. I've spent a lot of money on vehicles in the past trying to get the sound system right because when you're on the long trips, that's really all you got. Uh, brake controllers come standard in the Ram 2500, same as the 1500. Uh, I don't like them. They're very, very basic. Uh, we go with the Red Arc uh, Toe Pro on everything that we use. GME, this is going to go against everything that I've ever said. And I've just, I've, I had this. When I upgraded to XRS, this was actually the radio that was originally installed into the black truck, believe it or not. So this GME radio that you see right here is five, six, five years old. So I had this on the shelf and when we were building the truck, I said, Dave, just throw that in and I'll upgrade to XRS when we need it. Again, I haven't taken this one out on a touring trip with a convoy yet. Uh, but when I do, I'll definitely upgrade that one uh, to XRS. It still works absolutely amazing. Navigation, Uconnect system. Um, I'll give you a quick, just a really quick look at that. Uconnect system is absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the best systems I've ever used. Um, that's really about it for the interior. You've got sunroof. We don't use that a lot because obviously we've got, um, we've got roof racks on top. They're just a comfortable, amazing, big truck. You know, put as many people as you like into them. We might, let's do the signature move. Let's show the back seat and then we'll close this video out from there.
Welcome to the back seat. Somewhere I've never been. Or I never go before. Um, huge. Like, huge. Massive. Like, absolutely huge. Two metre wide cab. They're just... I don't know. How else do you say it? They're, they are huge. They're massive. You can put a family of five in here. No dramas. But even when, you're, when I'm rolling around with the boys on the weekend, and by the boys, I mean my mates... You know, when we're out doing something, we'll always jump in the 2500 because everybody is more comfortable um, in it. You got all the standard things. I've, I've shown through this in another video, but this whole rear floor folds flat. And generally speaking, for me, that's how I kind of roll around. On some of the trips, when we don't have passengers in the back, I'll put a Dometic fridge in the back here, load this all up um, full of clothes and whatever, whatever we're taking with us. Actually, let's have a flashback to Arnhem Land and have a look how Matty rolled around in his 2500 ram. Yeah, mate, I think this big stupid thing will go all right. That's a big program, dude. We'll see how it goes. Do you feel it, Matt? Do you know it's there? No, nah, mate, don't even feel it. That thing's an animal, eye. Absolute monster. And uh, in my defense, John just said to me, mate, please don't uh, tear up the roads with these big 37 inch tires. So I was taking it easy. Yeah, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> Bad tradesman, blanky tools, man. <laughs> so, uh, note to self, don't, uh, don't take it easy. And there you have it. A walk around my own personal daily driver, the Ram 2500. I think you're getting the picture by now. I've developed a real passion for the Ram trucks. Um, we've built an amazing relationship with Ram trucks. Um, but look, it comes back to the old, age old thing, you know, the products that we design here, the products that we use, uh, we do it, it's, it's all born from passion, you know. The first Ram that we got has led us to where we are now. Um, it is a truck that will be a part of, of Patriot Games, I think, for a very long time because there is nothing else on the market that can do what this thing does. There really isn't. There's nothing that compares. And to build something that can do what this does, I could probably buy two or three of them, to be perfectly honest with you. And I've attempted that before, so I know that from experience. Ram 2500, check them out, have a look at them. Uh, compare this to the, the Patriot Garage on Sarah's Ram 1500. You know, if, if you know that you want a Ram truck, but you're kind of sitting on the fence and you don't know which way to go, there's obviously budgets a consideration. 2500 is a fair bit more expensive than the 1500, but I think you get that value just in the gear that's fitted with it from factory. And as you can see, there's not a lot that you need to do to it to make it a very, very capable touring truck. And I can promise you, you'll probably be the envy of everyone on your block because, let's be honest, who doesn't love a Ram? Thanks for watching this episode of Patriot Garage. Uh, make sure you uh, put a comment in. What would you like to see us build next? If this was your truck, what would you have done differently? That's something that I'd probably like to hear. Check out the rest of the series and keep an eye out on what's coming up on all of the gear that we use on Patriot Games.